Hello, I'm Amos Latier, and I want to welcome you to Call of the Wild, cell phone audio tours of downtown Portland wildlife. These audio tours are going to be a little different than other audio tours you may have taken. I'm not uh, an expert on urban wildlife, but I do have some ideas that I want to share with you about the plants and animals in downtown. So the way that it works is that you need to go to one of the tour sites and then call back this number on your cell phone. So press 1 to get directions to tour sites, press 2 to take a tour, press 3 to find out more about this project, press 4 to hear comments left by other participants, press 5 to leave your own comments. Welcome to the South Park Blocks. This tour begins at Southwest Salmon and Park Avenue, and from here you should walk south through the park at your own pace, sitting on benches as you wish. The tour is going to last about eight minutes, and what you should do is look around at the animals and listen to the phone narration. I'm going to be talking about the wildlife you can find here and about the idea of invasive species. So let's begin. What animals are there in this park? What can you see here as you look around? Well, there are a number of native animals, including woodpeckers, crows, chickadees, robins, and finches. But you're probably more likely to see uh, foreign or what are called exotic animals, such as pigeons or European starlings or sparrows. You may also see squirrels. Now, there are native squirrels here, but the ones you're more likely to see in this park are the exotic fox squirrels that have come from the Midwest. And if you listen for them, they make sort of a quacking noise, kind of a <laughs> They sound kind of like that. So how did all these foreign animals get here to the park? Well, they all were brought by people, either on purpose or by mistake. And there's a really interesting story of how starlings got to this park. Starlings are native to Europe, but around uh, 100 years ago, there was kind of a, a little bit of a wacky businessman who lived in New York named Eugene Shefflin. And he somehow got it into his head that he was going to import every bird mentioned in Shakespeare to, <laughs> to the United States. And of course, most of the birds didn't survive, but the starlings that he introduced into Central Park in 1890 and 1891 did survive. The starlings were used to living in cities, but also they were helped by the fact that people had already pretty much decimated all the birds living in Central Park, so they didn't have as much competition. Well, within a few decades, starlings had spread entirely across the continental U.S., and it was about that time that they arrived in this park, where they've been ever since. I think that's sort of an interesting story showing us how uh, New York City was a site of animal immigration to the New World as well as human immigration. About now, you may be coming to the Rose Garden across from the Art Museum. And, uh, you know, Portland is the Rose City, and roses and blackberries and liberal white people are all symbols of Portland. But if you think about it, these are all recent imports to Portland. So, you know, many of the plants and animals that we think of as most familiar and natural are actually immigrants. Not everybody is in favor of animal and plant immigration. There's an ecological movement nowadays to stop uh, what's called bioinvasion by invasive species. The idea is that certain introduced plants and animals can become too successful and can drive out the native species, and this in turn can reduce biodiversity. I think that the people who are concerned about bioinvasion have a good point, and it's true that people should not move species around from place to place, but there are some things about these ideas that bother me. One of the things that bothers me most about the idea of invasive species is the way that hatred and hysteria can sort of 
condense around them. And this was brought home to me when I was talking with a friend of mine who just got back from Australia. And they have invasive species in Australia too, including the cane toad, which is the sort of despised, introduced toad. And my friend told me about how he had gone on a cane toad killing rampage one night with a shovel. And and this really bothered me because my friend is normally a really sweet, gentle, kind of hippie-ish guy. And his behavior had been completely transformed by this idea of invasive species. And at this point, you should be approaching another invasive species. If you look on your left behind some red street umbrellas, you can spot the feared Starbucks franchise. I also want to talk about another problem that I think the bioinvasion theories have. And this problem is that, in general, these theories presuppose an idea whereby nature doesn't really change that much and where species don't really move around and where um, it's sort of considered unnatural for things to be changing. But in fact, we know that nature is changing all the time. You know, before the white man came to Portland, this was not a timeless Garden of Eden. It was a changing, living, dying, evolving place, and people and animals and plants were moving. And going back to the beginning of life on this planet, things were always changing. You know, the first life forms, blue-green algae, created this toxic waste, oxygen, but the biological system was able to respond by evolving a new type of creature, animals, that could survive in this toxic environment. So things are always uh, changing and evolving, and species are always moving around. And another example of movement is coming up ahead of you, and that's PSU, Portland State University. You know, PSU has a really interesting history. It didn't start out here. It started out in the city of Vanport. And Vanport was a city north of Portland that developed during World War II when many immigrants, including quite a few African Americans, came to Portland to work in the shipyards. And Vanport grew until it became the second largest city in Oregon. Then after the war was over, a lot of people were out of work and this educational institution was founded, the Vanport Extension Center. Then shortly after that, a big flood came and pretty much completely wiped out Vanport and the Vanport Extension Center was moved here to the park blocks and evolved into what we now call PSU. And PSU still today provides a lot of help for all kinds of immigrants. So this park is not only a place full of immigrant animals, it's also a place of human immigration. So I guess I'd just like to conclude now by underscoring this idea that immigration is an important part of this park and also of this city and of this country and of this world. And I think the immigrant wildlife in this park really demonstrates the vitality and beauty and value of immigrants here. And I would just like to say hats off to all the immigrants and especially the pigeons and the squirrels and the starlings and the sparrows and the people in this park. So that's it. Thanks for listening.